Suid-Afrika is die bevolking in die afgelopen 6 jaar met gemiddeld 1 miljoen mensen per jaar gegroeid. Ons gesels vanavond hier oor. Welkom bij Prontheid. Vinnige en ongelijke bevolkingsgroei is al in die vroege 1950s geïdentificeerd als moeilijk een van Zuid-Afrika's grootste toekomstige problemen. Zoals in de rest van de wereld is die groei en samenstelling van onze bevolking bezig om die socio-economische en politieke landschap van onze samenleving drastisch te veranderen. Wat is die invloed van inkom inkomstenongelijkheid en bevolkingsaanwas op die landse politiek en economische beleid? Vanavond gesels ek met professor Nancy Stigler, hoofd van die departement Statistiek en Bevolkingsstudie aan die Universiteit van die Westkaap. Professor Andries Beseidnout is socioloog bij de Universiteit van Fort Heer en Ashwell Jenneker, adjunct directeur generaal bij Statistieke Zuid-Afrika. Voor ons gesels, kom eens kijken eerst naar een paar cijfers. Volgens de jongste raming van de Verenigde Naties staan Zuid-Afrikaanse bevolking thans op 58 miljoen mensen. Een toename van bijkans 6 miljoen mensen sedert 2013. Volgens Statistieke Zuid-Afrika groeit de totale bevolking tegen 1,55% of 870.000 mensen per jaar. Daar wordt jaarlijks 1,2 miljoen baba's geboren, terwijl daar in diezelfde tijdperk 500.000 mensen sterven. 28,8% van die landse bevolking is onder die ouderdom van 15 jaar. Dit betekent dat ongeveer 17 miljoen van die 58 miljoen mensen in die land jeugdig is. is. Die werkloosheidscijfer onder jeugdig is, is thans 55%. Zuid-Afrika is ook die meest ongelijke land ter wereld, met een index van 63% op de Gini-coefficiënt. De Gini-coefficiënt meer de gaping tussen rijk en arm. Ashwell, now this, this all seems very dramatic, but you believe that population growth is not necessarily a negative thing. Yes, no, it's, it's not necessarily negative. Um, currently, we're sitting at 58.8 uh, million people, according to Statistics South Africa. And if you look at the structure of our population, we're predominantly a young population. I mean, more than 60% of our population is between the ages of 15 and 65. So would um, seven, um, 17,000, would that be correct? Yes. Okay. So what we find is with this young population, you've got the potential of a demographic dividend. That means more working age population, less older people, less younger people. So the population as such is not inherently a problem for us in South Africa. But 3.3 million of those youths are completely unemployed, uninvolved, uneducated. You call them the NEAT group. Yes, NEAT, not in education, employment and training. So that is a problem for us in South Africa. The fact that uh, our population is not employed. I mean, 29% of the people in South Africa is officially unemployed. When you look at the discouraged people, you're talking about 38%. So that is a problem for us. What el the, the other big problem that contributes towards um, uh, poverty and inequality is the fact that people are not educated and skilled. So employment, education and skill, and then of course to create employment you need the economy to grow at a certain level. And the National Development Plan says that must be above 5% per year. Mm. But Andres, you're quite excited about the economic growth plan, which, which is prioritizing um, labor, well, in, in more yeah, labor, yeah. <laughs> for school in my Engels. Kabos, I don't know if I would call myself excited about it, but I don't share the, the negativity from, from Kasatu and some of the, uh, the critics from the left. I think the document is about as left-wing as a treasury can go. It's not the tre treasury's job to be radical. Uh, mm. uh, uh, it's, not, it's not where they should be going. But the treasury raises a really important point. They argue that industrial poli policy is really important. We need to grow manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But we should give up on the ideas that that is necessarily where, we'll, where we will create the jobs. Uh, a, a lot of the people who need jobs in South Africa aren't trained and skilled for manufacturing. So they identify other sectors, and agriculture is, agriculture is an important one, but also the services sector, such as tourism. Um, so, so those are the, and construction, obviously. So, so those are the sectors we should be looking at um, when we want to expand jobs for people who, who, aren't, who aren't currently working. Mm. Your comments on the youth that needs jobs? 
Well, actually, I think that is the, 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 the main problem. Indeed, there is a demographic dividend that is going to happen for the next 30 years. This is something that is very good. It is good if those youth are occupied, they're busy, they're in education. Not only, ev I mean, not everybody at university, but you need to learn a job how to, to work, how to be a plumber, etc. And mm. then it, it basically develops the economy. If it's not the case, we are going to have youth that are totally unoccupied. And then this is what we call a demographic bomb. Mm. Mm. It a happened demographic in, bomb. Yeah, in, it happened in other countries where you had a lot of, of young people. Uh, we have a lot of countries in Africa mm. where the median age is 15, 16, 17 years old. So that means that it's a very young population. When a population is not busy, then it's poverty, indeed unemployment, extremism, political instability, and so on. So this is what is very, very important to manage to develop the economy. The population in South Africa is not the problem as such. This is a population that is growing, I'm not going to say slowly, but it, it is not exponential, far from this. Mm. So it's more the economy that is the, 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 the issue than the population itself. Yeah, it seems the economy is always the issue. We're not going to draw any winkels, play and scarkel. Thank you.